Hey guys, we're on the final stretch of the body work for the Ultimate Crew Cab. I've been doing a little bit of here and there. I want to fill you guys in with what I've been doing. So let's go dig into it. Right, guys like i said i've uh, got a little bit further along on the truck uh not too far because i'm trying to show you guys a little bit more of the uh, process and everything i'm doing um one thing i have done the big major part of the cab the bodywork part of the cab anyway is the roof uh it had a bunch of hail dents on it uh, i'll put a before picture here so you can kind of see what i was talking about but there was a bunch of big old hail dents on this thing it was out in western kansas for a lot of its life and the uh, big hail storms out there big uh, super sail thunderstorms like to dump a lot of big hail and uh, this big old flat panel up here took the beating of that uh, i did get most of them out uh, and i got the uh, a layer of epoxy primer on there to seal everything up and then i uh, started working on the uh, uh, edges here where i had to repair rust along the cab roof here so that's what this uh, body fill here is for so uh, that's the big thing i have not done the seam seal on the uh, drip rail we'll do that a little bit later in this video uh, I have done some other seam seals we'll talk about later as well. I uh, also started doing stuff like where I uh, replaced the filler neck, started working on that. And uh, back here where I did the uh, cab corners. And uh, over here as well. And uh, just, you know, you got to body work all the, you know, there's not a bunch of flat surface uh, surfaces on the cab. Most of it's up there in the roof, but there is some like here in the cow, in the B pillars, and in the back of the cab, obviously. So... Uh, that's the major bodywork areas of this thing. Uh, up here, I did work on the uh, the pinch weld on the firewall. So this is a uh, uh, 2K self-leveling seam sealer. So uh, this this uh, you laid it out here, and it kind of flowed out and uh, made it real nice and even because uh, that uh, the regular heavy-bodied seam sealer is pretty tough to get it uh, to look good. Or at least I'm not good enough to make it look perfect yet. So uh, this self-leveling seam sealer kind of takes a lot of the skill out of it, as long as you're um, uh, you're able to contain it. So that's the big thing with this because it flows. So if you have something where it uh, it drops off, you got to dam it up. Um, see, I, I dammed it up here with some uh, regular seam sealer on the ends, and then you just float it in. And like right here, there's a drain hole. I had to tape that up so it didn't run out the drain hole. But uh, overall, that worked pretty good, and it's going to look a lot better once it's all painted because it's all just nice and flat and perfect. Another thing I've been doing is uh, uh, putting an internal coating on all the excess or the parts of the cab where you can't paint. So uh, right here is what I've been using. Um, I don't know if this is any good or not. It's just what I got, got to use. It is an uh, internal frame coating, they call it, and it has, um, oh... Uh, zinc phosphate that's what it is it's with zinc phosphate i don't know it's supposed to stop rust but i've been spraying it like down in here uh in the b pillars and back here in the cab corners you can see some of it here where i've sprayed it uh sprayed it down in there uh you see some of it coming out here it's really thin so i guess it kind of goes everywhere and it comes with this hose right here that you put on the put on the can and i had it on a piece of welding wire and you stick it down like I can stick it in this hole here and go in there and spray it all around. And uh, it's doing a pretty good job. I stuck the camera down in there to make sure it's getting everywhere. And uh, it's doing a pretty good job. I also did the inside. If the camera will adjust. I did the inside of the cab mount there. Uh, you know, like right here. I sprayed it all in there. So uh, those areas like that are getting uh, kind of a coating on it. Uh, just so... You know in the future if there's anything that collects in there it's not going to rot out again i'm also going to do up here inside of the uh, the cab up here on the roof because these crew cabs have such a problem with the uh the roofs on the things so uh rotting out i wanted the the pinch welds up in there there's a bunch of layers of steel and uh, i guess that's what caused all the uh, roof issues on these crew cabs so I'm going to get up in there. It's all just bare steel. You know, there's no coating on it or it's not galvanized or anything like that. So I'm going to get up there and get this coating sprayed in there and uh, we'll see how it turns out.
Alright guys, new day working on the Ultimate Crew Cab here. I got all the uh, interior uh, uh, crevices and cracks and everything sealed up with that, well I wouldn't really say sealed up, but treated with that internal frame coating stuff. I wanted to show you how it turned out. Uh, the, big, the big area on these crew cabs is up here in the drip rail inside the cab near the drip rail area. You can see there, got that all down in that pinch weld seam up there. You can even see some of the uh, the pitting on the metal there from uh, the uh, the rust that was already there. So hopefully that puts a stop to it and um, uh, prevents any more uh, rust from happening there in the roof. Hopefully, I, I think it should be good. Um, you know, all the big holes have been patched and then uh, trying to treat everything. Uh, that stuff is really, really thin. That's one thing I like about it. It's really thin, so it kind of runs in everywhere. Uh, if you can see, like right here, all the seams and stuff, it was running out. So uh, I haven't seen, I have to seam seal all this, but you know, there's still open spots right there and it's just running out and dripping on the floor and stuff. So uh, you know it's getting down in those cracks and uh, uh, you're not just painting the outside surface, it's actually soaking in the seam. Hopefully, that's in my mind anyway, that's what it's doing. So uh, that makes me feel good. But um, yesterday after I got that done, I was grinding on these welds right here where we welded the two cabs together and kind of getting those prepped and uh, cleaned up and uh, I burned through a spot and I started poking at it with a screwdriver and I found this a little uh, rust poked through right there on that piece see that hole there here's the back side of it and you can actually see that uh, that coating that I sprayed on the inside there so it actually sprayed on it but it didn't get down into that rust spot because it was all um, uh, it was packed full of flaky rust and uh, that little pinhole showed up, showed up right there and I started poking at it with a screwdriver and it opened up that big hole and uh, so I had to get that taken care of. Uh, I didn't pick up the camera because for one I was ticked that I missed that in the beginning uh, but uh, I just wanted to get it taken care of as soon as possible. I cut a patch piece out of one of my cabs, my parts cabs and uh, welded it in here. I actually welded or cut out a lot more than I needed to. If you can see here, that other metal right there is actually in really good shape. There's no rust on it at all. It was just right there in that pocket right here where stuff collected right here. So this is all uh, uh, pinched together. There's no open space here, but right here, this is open behind here and stuff kind of piled up uh, right there. So uh, unfortunately uh, caused a rust spot right there. So, uh, but I'm glad it's all taken care of now and I didn't find it after the thing got back from paint or like, Three months down the road, six months down the road, uh, it started rusting through right there or something. So glad I got it now. It's just kind of one of those things you have to do. Uh, another thing I happened that happened yesterday that uh, uh, wasn't really happy with was this seam sealer that I put on the uh, firewall right here, the pinch weld. I had to dig it all back out. Uh, unfortunately, there was a couple of spots. It was right here and then right over there where the seam sealer didn't uh, fully harden. This, this stuff I used, I bought this stuff because it's a regular tube, uh, but it's still a 2K sealant, so you don't have to buy the special gun to, to put it in. So 
Uh, I bought that stuff because you can just use my regular caulking gun I already have, and I'll have to buy the special, the special one for a hundred bucks. Trying to save some money, and in the end, it bit me. So I guess that's a lesson for me to to just go ahead and bite the bullet and uh, buy once and try once, I guess. But that stuff didn't har fully harden. I think it was where I stopped. So if you can see here, I had to dam up this spot right here where we had to cut the pinch weld out for the downpipe. And I did that all in one go, and it did pretty good. And then I stopped and started here again and went. And I think I went up to here, and I didn't put enough right here, and I had to go back and put some more. And then I started back again right here, and uh, it didn't harden right here. I think what was happening is, see if there, there's all this sticky stuff on the outside of the tube. It actually leaks some during transit. And I think it got some air in one of the sides. There's two sides because this is like an epoxy. So there's two components. And I think there was air in one side. When I was squeezing it, that air compressed and caused a uh, uh, high pressure pocket. So when I let off the gun, one side stopped that didn't have air. And the other side that had air kept pushing. There's a tip in here. I guess I should show that to you to make more sense. There's a mixing tip that you have on here where it mixes those two components together. They give you two. So this is that mixing tip. You see all those channels and stuff in there. So that goes on the end there and it was mixing together. And I think it was squirting too much of the, the first component in and not any of the other component. And then when I went to restart, it's squirting just that one side or too much of that one component in and you know, before it gets mixed up, you know, both together the right ratio and it was causing a problem. So I think it's more user error, but, uh, the uh, the product did let me down, so I went ahead and bit the bullet and got a professional uh, from Sim Products. The the two part it has it has two tubes and separate tubes, or it's one thing, but it's two tubes, and the gun is uh, two cartridges, and it has the same kind of tip. But hopefully that more professional setup uh, does does better. So I'm going to use that on the uh, the pinch weld here and up on the jerk rails up top. I wanted to use a two car a two K component, especially up there on the jerk rail to uh, get a really uh, a good, hard, uh, long-lasting seal up there on the drip rail because those are such a problematic area. So uh, that stuff will probably take a week to get here because I live in the middle of nowhere, so we'll wait on that. Um, I also ran out of some other stuff that I was using to uh, work on the cab, so right now I'm just kind of uh, trying to go over things and make sure I didn't miss anything like this right here. And that's what I was doing yesterday was going over the, the welds and uh, grinding those smooth and stuff like that just little little stuff but uh, hopefully that other stuff will get here pretty quick and we'll be able to tackle that i also got a tip that goes on that uh, that mixing tube that is a big wide like inch uh, blade and i'm going to use that on the seam here so you can put that down and uh, just make a big wide bead and not have to you know try to smear it around and make it look good so hopefully it'll look nice and clean all the way across that and uh, uh, even though it's going to be covered up, and then I'm even going to spray uh, lizard skin on top of that, but I still want it to look good. And uh, I'm going to do the same on this back here. And then uh, I also have all these spots like this right here to do. And uh, since I have that 2K gun coming, I'm just going to do all that in 2K sealer. And then, uh, yeah, and then it's just a bunch of sanding. Um, I'm still going to do... Uh, I still have to do the polyester primer on this stuff so I can block it down real good. And uh, But there's really not a lot of surface area on this cab uh, once you have the doors off. Um, I guess I should talk about that as well. I'm going to put the doors on this thing and I'm going to block it with the doors on it. And then I'm going to actually assemble the latch so I can latch the doors and I have my door seals to put in. So I'm going to try to do all that all in one go and get the doors where I want them. Uh, I have the uh, the hinges all marked because I got new pins. There is a little bit of play. This one's not bad. Um, really, the driver's side door uh, is the worst, which makes sense because it gets the most used. But there's some play in the hinges. So I got some bushings to put those in. So I'm going to yank the hinges out, replace the bushings, and then uh, hang the doors and try to get them all properly adjusted. And then um, I'll spray the uh, the primer on the whole cab, the doors and all, and then I'll block it all, and then we'll paint it with the doors hung on the, the cab, if all that makes sense. That's the way it's working in my mind. So uh, 
I'm going to uh, just try to go over this cab again. And if I find anything, I'll let you guys know. But otherwise, we're going to be waiting on the other stuff to come in. All right, guys. Well, I got all the stuff in. But while I was waiting on that, I started on the pins for the doors like I said I was going to. I have uh, the, the bushings, which are these little uh, little brass bushing things. And then the pins right here, as you can see, they're, they both, both came from Dennis Carpenter. I got one of them out. I did this one just to kind of learn, and then I was going to show you guys and the rest of them. But uh, I got this one done and put back in, and uh, I think it has, it still has the same amount of play in it. So I'm kind of wasting my time uh, replacing all of them because this was the worst one, and it's still about the same, if not even maybe a little bit worse. So uh, that is uh, kind of disappointing that uh, I didn't make those tighter, but then again, I think uh when your door is bolted on here you know the play in this one hinge once you have it all bolted together with both hinges it doesn't equal to the same amount of play in the door but uh we'll see i guess once i get the doors on what i think you know the back here it's it's tighter i can feel the difference there so definitely this one is worn but this one is a brand new pin with bushings so either the uh the clearances in the new pin set aren't good enough or tight enough or uh i don't know something else is causing that play but uh, it's kind of disappointed there, but uh, also I don't have to yank all the hinges out and, re and replace them So that it was kind of a pain the uh, little the original bushings were stuck in there And you had to pretty much destroy them to get them out, but I, I got it done and uh, Yeah, that was the end result, but uh, we also got the new seam sealer stuff in uh, Here's the gun. I was talking about so it, it holds two cartridges instead of just one or you know a, a dual component cartridge like this and I got the uh, high build self-leveling seam sealer and I got a medium-bodied uh, seam sealer that's not self-leveling. So uh, the high-build self-leveling stuff, it's a little thicker, more... Uh, it's a thicker viscosity, basically. And uh, that will hopefully allow me to... I'm hoping, anyway, this is my thought. Up here on the drip rail, where it... Let me get this thing spun around here. Where it drops down here. Um, I'm hoping that will allow me to use that here and not have it just running all over the place and pull up too much down here. Because... Uh, the uh the eastwood stuff i have originally that stuff was way thinner than i expected it to be and it would run all the way out the off the drip rail and come out the back and probably drip down the side of the cab so uh, hopefully that high build stuff is a little bit thicker viscosity and allow it to kind of stay there and uh, start to harden before it all runs out so we'll see how that goes um the tubes are actually smaller than i was expecting them to be i was kind of expecting uh this to be like a full-size caulking gun two of those together but it's actually uh, a lot smaller than I was expecting. So hopefully I have enough product. I'll probably have to buy another tube. Uh, we'll see which one I use more of. But this medium body stuff, it uh, is kind of like more conventional seam sealer. It doesn't flow out, uh, but it is kind of thinner than just regular heavy bodied seam sealer. So I got it here and I'm going to use the tip. If you can see that little triangle tip, I should have opened the package, but the little blade tip thing, I think they call it a Versa tip. So there's that little tip and it goes on the end of the mixing tube or the mixing tips and I'm going to run that along here and have that big wide uh, blade along that to uh, seal up this seam here like I did from the factory and I'm also going to do the seam back here or they will at the back of the cab so I'm going to do both of those and then I'm also going to use this stuff on the uh, the edges right here like where they, they have a seam sealer here and then on the bottom of the cab right here and uh, along here I'm going to redo these joints and that kind of stuff so i'm going to use this for this for that i hope i have enough because i know that this this big blade tip thing is going to use a lot right here so we'll see how that goes and i'll probably have to order some more but uh yeah so i mean i guess that's how it's going i am going to try to uh, uh do some sanding on the door jams before i hang the doors uh just so that it's not in the way when i'm trying to sand all this stuff because i will have to scuff all this uh before it's painted but uh, overall, it's going together really good. I'm going to kind of get a feel for this uh, new seam sealer setup, and I'll uh, probably show you guys some of it and show you how it's going down. All right, guys. Well, I have the uh, medium-bodied seam sealer loaded up in the gun, and you can see that mix tube there with all the little passages and channels where it mixes together. If you can see over here, see there's the, the other component, the white, and then it fades to gray where it mixes together. And I also have that uh, blade tip on the uh, end there, and I actually trimmed a little bit off of it to make it a little bit, uh, uh, not as wide, basically. 
and uh, I practiced over here on that back seam, but I'm not going to show you that yet because I'm going to show you guys doing this one here. Now, before we get into this, I just want to uh, uh, preference that I am not an expert on this stuff. I am an extreme novice. This is the first time I'm ever doing anything like this. So don't use this as a how-to guide. This is more just showing you guys what I'm doing. If you're interested in uh, learning how to do this stuff, uh, follow videos of other guys, experts on uh, uh, YouTube, and it's actually Sim Products is the main videos I watch on this stuff, on learning the application tips and all that kind of stuff. So there's professionals out there that really teach you how to do this stuff. This is just me showing you what I'm doing. I'm probably doing a bunch of this stuff wrong, so uh, uh, just uh, wanted to throw that in there. Just I am, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just showing you guys and bringing you guys along for the ride. So here we go. I am going to uh, seam the uh, the. Uh, middle seam in this cab here and I thought it went really well so I wanted to show you guys how it's going. Alright, now how I did the other one is I started in the middle and then worked my way to the out outside and then went around to do the other end. So I'm going to start here at a weld. Puts down a nice big fat bead. Now this is probably a lot bigger bead than I need, but it also covers a big area. So if you mess up or you have a little bit bigger gap to uh, seal up, this might help in those kind of areas. I did notice I'm using quite a bit more product with this big blade on it, but the trade-off is you get more coverage. So. I also am happy I got the medium bodied stuff because uh, it kind of helps it kind of get rid of the inconsistencies from me putting it down and kind of gives it a more consistent appearance, kind of levels out more. All right guys, I got that side done. I'm going to go over here and do the other side. All right, so there you go. There's the finished product. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, especially considering how the factory did it. On this truck in particular, the uh, the seam sealer the factory had on this, it was just all over the place, and there's actually gaps where they uh, didn't even get it on the actual crack. So uh, hopefully doing a little bit cleaner job than the factory did. I'm, I'm really happy that I decided to use that blade tip instead of just trying to do it with the tip and kind of zigging across that to get it all filled up. That just seems like a uh, more professional uh, looking uh, seam to me. And uh, well, like I said earlier, I'm going to be covering this up anyway. It's going to get a layer of lizard skin on it. And then it's getting carpet on it. And you're never going to see it. But uh, I still, especially for the trucks like I'm doing a full-blown restoration on, uh, I'm probably going to be doing this in the future. And it's good to practice and uh, make sure you're doing it right. Uh, here's my first attempt here. It's probably not as pretty. Um, I also went ahead and did it without the blade tip so you can see the difference there around where these seat holes, uh, the, the holes for the seat bracket go, and uh, as well as these plugs. There's be a rubber plug that goes in there. I didn't want to get it in the way, see how it got pretty close here. So I just did it with the tip there, and it's not nearly as nice, nice there. So you can kind of see the difference as to why I'm happy with that, uh, that blade tip. Now I did use a lot more product than I uh, anticipated. You see this here, we're almost out of this do it just doing these few seams here so i'm probably going to order a heavy bodied seam sealer uh, uh cartridge to do the bigger gaps like right here where we have that big gap there and stuff and i'm probably going to save the uh, remaining medium bodied stuff to do the uh, little tight seams like this right here you know this is a real tight seam that medium bodied stuff will do good there 
but uh, here we have this big hole to fill I'll probably get that heavy bodied stuff since it's a little thicker so I'll have to get that coming but uh, overall I'm really happy with how it turned out um, we're also going to do the self leveling up there on the drip rail and as far in the, the firewall here as well so I'm going to show you guys that so uh, I'm going to get prepped for that and uh, we'll see how that goes Okay guys, looking back now, uh, this is like 15 minutes later. I wanted to show you guys how it's kind of flowing out. But uh, looking back now, I definitely should have trimmed this back to the other line. You see that there? It made the the, uh, the output just a little bit smaller because uh, all I did here was go right here and then we were out of product. So this tube is completely empty now. So it did use quite a bit of product. Uh, but then again, this I think this tube was like 38 bucks, uh, not counting the gun and everything. So it's really not that bad to get this nice quality seam here. But I think we could have gotten away with just a little bit smaller and probably had a little bit left over to do a little bit more seam work. But uh, uh, overall, I am extremely happy with how it laid out. If you can see, um, the edges are pretty soft. Like it really kind of softened up and just kind of uh, flowed together basically. Um, and like all the ridges for me going back and forth and being jittery with the with the gun and everything and letting go of the gun and squeezing again uh they kind of smoothed out you know not a hundred percent smoothed out but they kind of smoothed out you know like 40 percent of the way basically you know and and a lot of the edges and stuff kind of flowed out so uh watching the the product demos on uh, the sim products web or youtube channel really helped me decide to get the medium body for this job right here but uh, like I said, I am going to order some heavy body for that uh, the bigger gaps and that kind of stuff where, where, where that real thicker stuff would probably help out a lot. So I'm going to get some of that product ordered. But I just wanted to show you how nice that worked out. And uh, hopefully if uh, you guys are uh, in this same scenario where you need to uh, do some big, uh, do a big seam across a big flat panel like this or something, uh, this video helps you. But uh, like I said, I'm going to get started on prep work for the drip rail. Uh, they did say on here that up in drip rails or anything that's going to be kind of a severe uh, area like a drip rail, it needs to be primed. Um, this is primed. I did prime the hood with epoxy primer, but then I did some uh, uh, body fill work up on the edge where I did some metal work and stuff. Uh, so uh, running that sander on that body fill, I did uh, get, get direct uh, metal on the uh, drip rail there. So I'm going to reprime it and you have to let that fully cure before you apply the seam sealer. So we have, uh, I think it's five days before the uh, the epoxy primer fully cures out. And uh, it does say on here, it is direct metal capable. So I guess that's good, but it, did, it does say on the product sheet, if you read in the finer print, it says on drip rails, it must be applied over epoxy. So I'm gonna do what the product uh, sheet says and uh, get some more epoxy on that drip rail before we start doing that. And uh, I'm going to do the firewall at the same time as a drip rail just so uh, I can hopefully use up all the uh, the tube I have doing the product and not uh, have to seal it back up and hope it stays good before I'm ready to do the next step. So, uh, but like I said, overall, very happy with that. Uh, we're gonna catch back up with you guys whenever I have some uh, uh, product up here and we're gonna put some more seam sealer on the roof. All right guys, up here on the drip rail, I actually did not apply any more epoxy. Uh, went up here and inspected it all and everything down in here where the, uh, the uh, seam seal is gonna go. It's all got good epoxy down in here. Uh, the bare metal I was talking about is up here higher to where, you know, it's not going to uh, uh, be on that, under that seam sealer basically. So I was looking on the TDS sheet for the, uh, the seam seal I have here for this. And uh, you only have a 24 hour recoat window. So uh, after 24 hours, you have to scuff it. And uh, I have this roof panel ready to go with, uh, I wanna put epoxy on this stuff, these little spots and then do uh, the uh, uh, high build primer that I can block. So uh, since I got all this ready today to uh, to do the roof in that stuff, I'm gonna do this before that, let it kind of sit overnight and cure, and then tomorrow morning I'll do the, uh, the uh, primer here on the roof. So uh, that's how I'm gonna do that, just so I can avoid having to worry about scuffing that up good enough to get paint to stick, and we'll just uh, uh, do it with a chemical bond instead of a, a mechanical adhesion. So. I have this all prepped. I have it. Uh, I did wax and grease remover on all of it. Well, before that, I did. Uh, I sanded it down because this uh, primer is fully cured. So I did. Uh, I hit it with some like uh, 220 grit and then uh, blew it off, and then wiped it down with wax and grease remover. And now we're going to get ready to uh, apply the uh, seam seal. So let's see how it goes. I also have the uh, the factory drain holes here on the drip rail plugged with tape because it will run out of that. So. Uh, wish me luck. We'll see how this turns out. 
Well, guys, I got a good start on the seam sealer up here on the drip rail, but uh, unfortunately, I ran out. We only made it to about here on the uh, the roof. We did all the backside there, all around the front, and it ran out right about here. Um, still, uh, still learning things, and uh, apparently, those uh, dual cartridge seam sealer cartridges do not hold the amount of product I think they hold. Uh, there, there's not. I guess there's just not as much in there as I'm thinking. So I uh, didn't have enough. I ordered some more, but unfortunately, you know, it's going to be several days before it gets in. So my whole plan of uh, priming the roof while that uh, seam sealer is still uh, uh, paintable is uh, thrown out the window. So it's no big deal. I'll just be scuffing that before I prime it uh, so it can adhere. And uh, once that other stuff gets in, I'll finish the drip rail and I'll do the pinch weld on the firewall as well. But I thought I would show you guys how it turned out. Um, pretty happy with it. Uh, there are some spots like right here, if you can see that where it didn't, there's a little like a bubble pocket right there. I'm gonna have to patch those once I get new stuff. I'll probably just, you know, stick the in there and kind of fill that up. Um, and a little bit of unevenness. Uh, it's probably technique and application and everything. Uh, since I'm, you know, first time doing it, I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, the first, the stuff I used on the pinch weld before that failed, that stuff was really runny and you could just do whatever you want and it just flow out and be, it's like pouring like syrup in there or something. Uh, this stuff is not, this is the heavy bodied seam sealer, so it's thicker. They do have a regular self-leveling seam sealer and it's probably, it's runnier. I know for sure it's runnier. I don't know how it compares to the other stuff I use, but uh, it would probably flow out here better. But one spot where it would be a problem and the reason I got the heavy bodied stuff is over here in the, I know the doors are on it. We're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, getting ahead of myself here. Uh, but over here on the, uh, the crew cab, it drops down here. On a regular cab, this runs down here and it would really be a problem. Um, I I'm, don't know what we would do there if this was a regular cab. But the crew cabs, they have this little just little jog, jog right here where it drops a little bit. I think that... Um, that uh, the regular seam sealer stuff would all run out down here and pull up down here, but this thicker stuff, it was able to kind of stay in here and not all run out and everything. So uh, that's why I got the heavier stuff and it seemed to work really well there. There is a spot up here that it's going to be a problem, but I think what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna tilt the cab up to where this is level here and kind of do that part and let it kind of cure and get a little hard. And then I'm going to come up and do the top here. So uh, I'll see how that goes. But uh, um, I did also get the uh, big gaps right here filled with the heavy body seam sealer. So that stuff went, that's pretty easy. You know, just like caulking, caulking a gap or something. So that's how that works. Now I do have the doors started to hang on here because uh, I'm waiting on that seam sealer here. So I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and hang the doors and uh, get them kind of adjusted. And uh, um, it's going good other than the door seals. Um, I know that when you replace door seals, they are very, it's hard to shut the door and it's a pain, but they you normally break in. They should break in uh, and it gets easier and easier to shut the door. But man, these were like, this is like way off. You know, I shut the door here and it's, I can't, you know, I don't know if that's going to work or not, but uh, we'll see. Uh, I have the, uh, the doors aligned other than that. Um, this also is for like an OBS truck. Uh, like a 90s Ford truck and it doesn't use the uh, the glue it has like a, a press-on deal uh, I did that so I don't have to use the glue so I'm just gonna see how they work uh, if I can't get them to work and they don't ever break in I'll change them out for something that's uh, the, the regular glue in type uh, door seals but for now I think that's how uh, we're gonna handle that um, I'm going to try to get the epoxy and seal everything up here that I've done uh, where it's bare metal and uh, body fill. I uh, get that sealed up and then uh, once that seam sealer comes in and I'm able to complete the roof, we'll do the same for the roof. And then I'm going to spray it all in the, uh, uh, now I forget what it's called, the high build primer stuff I've been using, uh, primer surfacer stuff, this, this stuff. I already have this door in it so I'll get the rest of the truck sprayed in that and then I'm going to be blocking it all down and then uh, it should be ready for paint so uh, little steps at a time some setbacks due to my inexperience I like that seam sealer not having enough on hand but uh, overall i think it's going pretty good and uh, we'll get this thing knocked out and hopefully we'll be heading to paint soon so uh, let's see how it go guys well guys over the weekend i did get the uh, the rest of the cab sprayed in epoxy primer that's what this white stuff is 
it is a, uh, a direct metal uh, sealer, kind of a you know primer. It uh, it lays down to the metal and seals it up and gets it ready for this primer surfacer. I've got a spray on everything. There are a few spots I'm going to work on first though, um, mainly because uh, I missed some spots or some spots don't look quite right. I'm going to work on them again, like right here. I missed a little dent down here in the B pillar, so I got to I got to work on that. And uh, there is a few pinholes where I did use some body fill, so I got to uh, I'm going to do some. Uh, uh, spot putty on those pinholes but uh, overall i'm pretty happy with everything uh there is a problem with this door i don't know uh if it's the door or if it's my splice in the cab but the end of the door right here it sticks out a little bit if you can see it's kind of you can see the corner of the door sticks out just a little bit so uh i'm gonna work on that i think what i'm gonna have to do is uh, uh try to bend this corner in i'm gonna see if how i can do that um, I don't, I, maybe the frame of the door is, or the, the frame right here is tweaked or something. I don't, if there was something wrong with where I spliced the cab together, I think everything would be screwed up. My gaps and stuff wouldn't be right. So, uh, I'm going to work on that. So just a few things like that, but overall I am really happy with how the, uh, uh, the primer laid out and everything looks, uh, for being my first time at body work. I thought it looked pretty good. You know, there's a few spots, like I said, that, uh, I got to readdress, but, uh, uh, really happy to have it all back in one color. It's easier for me to see imperfections when it's all in one color, when it's when it's all splotchy from you sanding and, and uh, uh, trying to smooth stuff out. And then it's, it's kind of hard for me to tell. You can kind of feel stuff, but I can't tell what needs to happen and what needs to move where. But when I spray it all in one color, I find it's uh, really easy for me to see, uh, oh, yeah, this needs to happen here and this needs to happen here. So it's easier for me to get that done. So um, uh, happy to have this uh, back in uh, all in one color like it was when it came back from the sandblaster because it seems like it went uh downhill and uh looked worse but uh, that's just uh the the way things go i guess you got to make things worse to make them better um yeah still waiting on the uh the seam seal uh we have a uh, holidays uh, i think today's monday it's a federal holiday so the uh, uh post office is closed so uh, it'll be here tomorrow which would be tuesday so uh unfortunately i started on that uh the drip rail on a thursday it was actually thursday afternoon and by the time i got it ordered you know it was late thursday and then they didn't ship it till friday and you know it's only one state away where i get my stuff from because they're quicker but you know with the weekend and the holiday it's uh, going to be quite a while before i get it but uh, we'll get that taken care of and then i'll get the the roof primed and uh, hopefully when that stuff gets here i'll have it all ready to go with the uh the primer surfacer and then we have a block party so gonna be blocking the thing out but uh, i'm gonna work on those few spots and see how that turns out and then uh, we'll check back with you guys later all right guys i've finally got the uh new uh self-leveling seam sealer in so uh, i'm gonna get the gun loaded up and hopefully two tubes is enough to do everything we have to do i think it definitely should be because all we have to do is this one side here and then the back of the cab and then uh, up here on the uh the pinch well on the firewall so that's all we have left to do um i did get the rest of the cab in epoxy uh the doors and stuff so uh there was a few spots i had to work on there was a dent right here i missed and uh there were some spots on the inside of the door there was a speaker right here or they, they had a speaker on the inside and had a whole bunch of holes drilled here i welded all those up and then smoothed it all out so i have to do that but uh, once i get that seam sealer up on the cab and all these spots taken care of then i'm going to uh, uh epoxy the cab in the spots that i missed and then we're going to do the uh, high build primer on the rest of it and then we'll be uh ready to start blocking so i'm going to get after that seam sealer and we'll see how it turns out guys just got done with this side here and uh sorry i can't really get a very good angle when i'm doing this but uh uh i can tell you right now i did a way better job on this side than i did the other side over there 
uh, was just more consistent with the amount of product I put down and uh, was able to uh, make a uh, easier bead there. Uh, I did put the tip right on the edge there and try to run that along there in, in constant speed and the same amount of product. So uh, it turned out really nice. That self-leveling stuff is really good for something like this where it's contained, where you're in a, a trough there because it just levels out smooth and you don't have to try to swipe it with your finger and, and try to make it smooth before it sets up. So uh, uh, really happy with how this side turned out. Um, I did get a little bit too much right here. As you can see, it's almost ready to pull over. So uh, I, I quit just in time, which that'll work out nice because any water that gets collected here, it'll kind of have a spot to drain out right there. But uh, still got a little bit too much product right there in that corner. And uh, you know, the stuff, it doesn't really want to flow away from uh, that little drop right there. It wasn't really enough to make it want to flow out down here and collect. So uh, like I said, that medium bodied uh, uh, self leveling stuff, I think is really good for something like this. Now right here, I think it definitely would run out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do the top here uh, as much as I can while the cab's level. And then I'm gonna tilt it up and do this spot and let it kind of set and then uh, go, go tilt it up the other way and do the other side. So I think this thing has, this stuff has a, a set time of 15 minutes. So uh, a working time of 10 minutes. So really shouldn't take very long and then I'll get that stuff knocked out. Well, I got the uh, one side done here, this one little corner. See, I have the, I have the cab tilted. Um, it's uh, taking a little bit longer for it to set up than I was kind of envisioning in my head. So I think I'm gonna have to burn uh, one or two of these uh, mixing tips on the, uh, the epoxy because uh, they're the seam sealer because this stuff starts setting up in here. So I'm probably gonna have to ditch that because I guess I have to wait long enough for that to cure. And while that's curing, the stuff in that tip's curing. So I didn't really think that through. Uh, in my mind, I was thinking, yeah, I'll do one side, then I'll come up here and do the pinch weld while that's curing, and then I'll change it over. But I can't do that pinch weld because the cab's at an angle. So uh, it's no big deal. They send you two tips with every tube, and I've uh, with all the tubes I've bought, I kind of have a collection of a, a few extra. So these things. So no big deal. That's why they send you more than one. So uh, we still have this one little spot right here to do. But once I tip the tap cab up we'll do that and let it cure and then we'll move on to the firewall well guys i got all the seam sealer finally done on the cab we did the whole drip rail and i just got done with the firewall and it turned out really good uh there are some imperfections in it but this is my first time so uh each time i'll probably get better and better i did learn quite a few things uh doing this cab so uh, maybe my next one i'll be uh better at it uh just go over the things i kind of learned here uh, here's the uh, firewall pinch weld and uh, if you remember right here I did have to cut the pinch weld to clear the downpipe so I did have to dam it up with some uh, heavy bodied seam sealer there uh, to keep the self leveling stuff from running out but for this right here I think in the future I'm going to go with the regular self leveling stuff the thinner stuff I was running into problems getting enough product on here to kind of flow out and get all the way across the uh, the width of that big wide pinch weld there with that heavy body stuff because it's kind of thicker and doesn't really want to flow. So I was getting uh, the channel fuller than I really wanted to uh, to get to get enough product to cover everything. So I think that thinner stuff would be a lot better here. What I ended up doing uh, was I would run a bead on the outside or the inside here 
run a bead on along the firewall and then I come back and run a bead along the edge of the pinch weld there and then the channel there in the middle I would just run a, another bead in there to let it kind of you know do three passes and then it would kind of all flow together and get together and, and level out that way before I was kind of zigzagging across and that wasn't really working out very good uh, I was making a little bit uh, being a little bit more messy than I wanted to be I was still kind of messy so there's a spot I got this stuff will clean up uh, once it cures up, I'll uh, get a razor blade out there and kind of scrape that stuff off. But uh, uh, the the cab or the, the drip rail up here, I think it went pretty good. Uh, the um, the corners here didn't turn out quite as good as I would like. Uh, this is the better one. The one over there, I tried to I tried to do it without tilting the cab, um, and it was okay. This stuff is actually a lot thicker than I was kind of anticipating it being. So really, I probably could have just done all of this in one go and just allowed it to kind of flow down here naturally and not and did it before I did this this part and let it kind of flow out here I couldn't really do that now because I've already I already filled this channel up with seam sealer so it didn't have a place to go but uh, in the future I think I'll start here and do this first but uh, just kind of little stuff like that I kind of learned and uh, figured out um, but uh, overall pretty happy with it uh, now I am going to get the rest of the cab in epoxy and uh, that high build primer like I said and uh, we'll see how that turns out and uh, we'll probably have to end that video uh, there because this one might be getting a little bit long but uh, hopefully the next video on this thing will be taking this thing to uh, the uh, paint shop and uh, getting ready to get paint on this thing so I can't wait for that but uh, I'm gonna get the spray and some primer on this thing so uh, wish me luck I hope it goes good well guys here it is it's in the final stage of primer uh, so glad to get this thing to this point. It's been a long time coming. It's a big milestone for me to get this thing to this point. Uh, being uh, I'm a mechanic by uh, trade, I am uh, by no means a body man, and this was the first time I ever attempted anything like this. So uh, doing it on a big project like this was kind of intimidating from the start, but uh, I'm super glad to have it done and to have it all turn out uh, to my uh, expectations at least. It is not perfect. It is actually far from perfect. There's lots of imperfections if you start looking at it close, but uh, it's good enough for who it's for, and that's myself. So uh, uh, I think as I do more and more projects like this, I'll get better and better, and I might feel confident enough to do a truck like this that I'm selling. But uh, for now, we'll just leave my own projects to uh, me fumbling my way through this. But it's a big, big uh, help having uh, Kevin Tates and Paint Education University on board with this thing and uh, helping me along the way and teaching me all the ins and outs of doing the paintwork. Now, I'm not doing the final color on this, the Wimbledon white paint, uh, but I, I did all the primer and the bodywork and all that stuff. So uh, I don't trust myself enough to do the final color. You know, I'll, I'll uh, save that for maybe down the road when I get a little bit better with things because... I did spray the primer on this thing and it, it's not perfect. It's got texture in it. It has runs in it, all that kind of stuff. But uh, the, the good thing about primer is I have to sand it down anyway, so I get to sand all that stuff out. So I get to make myself look better while I uh, take my time sanding this thing. So speaking of sanding, that's what we have next to do. We have a bunch of block sanding to do uh, to get all this, uh, just the, the, the primer all smoothed out and uh, all the runs out of it. Um, see if I can find a run. I can't really see. I think there's one. There's one right here, little run, but anyway, stuff like that and uh, block it out and get the texture out of it, make sure it's all smooth and uh, anywhere where we're getting paint on the thing. Like uh, down here, I'm doing uh, the Raptor liner on the bottom so I didn't spray under that pinch weld because all that's gonna be the Raptor liner. Uh, so that's that's why that's all like that. But uh, I'm overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. Um, like I said, there are imperfections in it, uh, so uh, I, I can't, uh, I guess I can't be too hard on myself because this is my first one and this is a driver. It's not a show truck. So, you know, I'm pretty happy with the, the uh, quality of, uh, how it turned out. So anyway, guys, I'm going to get the block standing on this. It's going to be a long, tedious process and, uh, I'm probably going to put the camera down just so I don't screw it up. Cause if I have a camera in my face, I'll probably screw up and burn through and have to start over in spots. So I'm going to try to get that knocked out in the quickest time as possible. I might pick up the camera and show you guys what I'm doing along the way and hopefully we'll uh, get this thing to the paint shop and I'll get to show you guys around that paint shop. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I got to talk to the guy, see if he'll let me film in there and stuff. But uh, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode and getting this far in this truck. It's a big milestone to get to this point. Um, 
I know it's kind of, uh, the, the videos have been pretty few and far between, but that's because I've been taking my time and, uh, I've had to redo some stuff and it's just taking me longer to do stuff and, you know, general stuff. But the videos will pick up when we get the cab back from paint and we're doing actual mechanical stuff again, stuff I'm good at. The uh, the videos will hopefully start uh, picking up and rolling out sooner. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching this vlog. Thanks for sticking around. This I know this one's kind of a long one, but uh, hit the subscribe button so you can see more of this project. Give me a thumbs up if you like this truck. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.